Who would have thought that coffee and rosemary together in a morning beverage could have such an amazing flavor profile? I kid you not. The flavor combination of rosemary and coffee together, and I'm going to show you how to brew it to perfection here in this video in a few minutes here, is amazing. Not only that, but you also get a cognitive boost, not just from the caffeine and the beneficial things found in coffee, but also from the rosemarinic acid and all the polyphenols found in rosemary. It's a beautiful synergistic combination. Rosemary has been reported to have many different health promoting benefits, uh, but as with most superfoods out there nowadays, uh, the, the, the headlines and the marketing make it seem more magical than it actually is. But turns out rosemary has been studied pretty extensively and there do seem to be some potential and promising health promoting benefits from using this herb. Uh, it's really, really high in polyphenols, flavonoids, and antioxidants. Rosemary has been reported to have anti-inflammatory, anti-cancer, antifungal, and antimicrobial properties. Now, among uh, doing my research for this video, there are also a handful of controlled studies that I came across looking at the short-term cognitive benefits of rosemary and rosemary extracts. And a good handful of the studies I came across were actually done in university students and college age students. Uh, they wanted to see if this herb could improve their cognitive abilities during studying and, and you know, they have long days and little sleep and things like that. And turns out that it did help. Uh, so if you have, you know, a better performing brain, your cognition is going to go up. But if you have a better performing brain, other things are gonna go up as well. So not only did it improve their memory and cognitive performance in the short term, but it also reduced anxiety, depression, and even improved their sleep. And that's all compared to a placebo in these controlled trials. So why put it in your coffee? As I said in the beginning, it's fucking amazing. It's so good. And even if it didn't have any potential health benefits from steeping the rosemary and things like that with your coffee, just the flavor alone is absolutely a amazing. And I first started doing this back in December of 2017. I documented it on the gram. You can see the post right here. And I've been doing it on a regular basis ever since. I've just continually posted about it. And as a content creator, it's a great feeling when you get messages from people who watch your stuff and they report back positive results from something they tried because of your recommendation. That's how you know you're content is providing some real world practical value uh, in this world and into your audience. And I get reported back, uh, I, I get a lot of positive feedback from three things mainly from my content. Number one is Sheila Jeet. People always message me about Sheila Jeet that they started taking it because of me and this, this, and that happened. Uh, I also get a lot of positive feedback from medicinal mushroom extracts like Alpha Dynamics and things like that. I have videos on that if you wanna go watch it. And the third thing is this rosemary coffee. Ever since I've been posting about it for the last year and a half or so, dozens and dozens of people have been hooked on the herb and continue doing it on a regular basis, which is really cool. So we're gonna brew it together. I'm gonna show you how I brew it every single morning to perfection. Let's get to it. Strap on your strap-ons and let's go brew some coffee. For those who are curious on how I brew my own cup of coffee, it's not the conventional French press, four minutes, plunge it down, you're good to go. I go a little bit beyond that and it honestly is one of the best tasting cups of coffee I've ever had. Black, straight up, just like that, no stevia, nothing needed. That's how good it tastes. It's not bitter, there's no sludge at the bottom like most French press brews. What I do is I personally use between 30 and 35 grams of coffee. Now I weigh out the beans and then I grind them down right before I'm ready to brew. As the water's boiling, I'm grinding the coffee beans down. Grinding the coffee beans from the whole bean, as soon as it's ready to, as soon as you're ready to brew it, ensures maximum freshness and flavor for your coffee. Seriously, buying whole bean coffee and grinding it before the brew enhances the experience so much. I would highly, highly recommend doing that before doing anything else with your coffee routine. So I grind my coffee down about 35 grams, and then I use between 750 to 800 milliliters of water, filtered water. I don't use tap and I would not recommend that. 35 grams of coffee, about 800 milliliters of water or so, and one or two sprigs of rosemary. I put the coffee, the rosemary in the French press, and I slowly pour the hot water over the coffee in the middle in a small circle until it fills up, until I fill up the whole French press. Then I don't touch it. I let it sit as is for your typical four minutes. Then when the four minutes are up, 
I break the crust with a spoon and I steer the coffee and I steer what's in the French press. Then here's where the unconventional part comes in. I let it sit for another eight to 10 minutes. I don't touch it. It's very key to not let it touch. I'm sorry, it's very key to not move it and to not touch it because what's happening in these eight to 10 minutes is it's gonna continue to brew and extract flavor, but all the coffee grinds are gonna go down to the bottom. And if you're moving it and steering it, they're gonna stay at the top and it's not gonna be a good cup of coffee. You're gonna get sludge and bits of pieces in there. Then after eight to 10 minutes, at this point, the coffee has been brewing for about 14, 15 minutes total. I then don't touch it and I gently pour it over two strainers, a strainer, into my cup and I drink it then. Now, notice, I do not plunge my French press. There's a very important reason for that and I've tried it and tested it. To get a non-bitter cup of coffee from a French press, you don't plunge it. Most people plunge it and they press it down hard and they press it down fast. And what that does is, is all the grinds at the bottom after brewing there for a few minutes, when you squeeze it down with the plunger, it releases all the bitter coffee, nasty flavor that we don't want and it releases sludge and things like that. And that's why there's sludge at the bottom of most cups of coffee when brewed with a French press. So key, I don't plunge it. I pour it over a strainer and then I leave all the, uh, the mud looking stuff down at the bottom and I throw that out. That simple. That 15 minute brew method, four minutes, steer it, let it sit for another eight to 10, don't plunge it, pour it over a strainer, best cup of coffee I've ever had and probably for you too. I learned about this method from a coffee expert on YouTube. I'll put the link in the description down below. I was super skeptical when I saw the video. I was like 15 minute French press, that's gotta be bullshit. Went through the comments on his video, Everyone was saying, holy crap, it's the best cup of coffee I've ever had. I didn't want to try it, but I did. It's amazing. I do it all the time. Now I've been converted. I do that all the time. That's how I brew it. One of the beautiful things about brewing rosemary coffee is that you can do it with any brewing method and it adds no extra time or cleanup process to your routine. So it's awesome and it's really simple. All you have to do is put some fresh rosemary with the ground coffee when you brew your coffee. It's that easy. I mean, do I really need to explain any further? I don't, but I will because I know I'm gonna get some questions. If you're using a pour over, you can even do this with a Keurig as long as you're using reusable K-cups. You can do this with a drip coffee, even with a regular old coffee maker. There just is one extra step that I would recommend, which is taking the leaves off of the stem, chopping them up, and then adding them with the coffee grounds. The reason that is, is when you're doing a French press, everything is fully submerged. You're basically steeping the rosemary with the coffee and making like a rosemary tea inside your coffee. But if you're doing a pour over or using a Keurig machine or drip coffee or whatever, the coffee and the tea really isn't submerged and the water isn't sitting with the grounds for a very long period of time. The pour over coffee style, you're literally just pouring coffee water over the coffee and it's just passing right through. It's not sitting there for a long time and really getting a chance to fully steep. And if you like doing that method, what I would suggest is chopping up the rosemary, then adding it with the coffee grounds. That will ensure that you're extracting as much flavor and as many oils and the beneficial compounds that you can from the rosemary. It's similar to grinding your coffee down so you get maximum flavor and benefit. Basically, grind your rosemary leaves down so you get maximum flavor and benefit if you're doing one of those uh, styles of brewing such as Keurig, pour over, regular coffee maker, or something like that. And again, just to note, if you're using a French press, you don't have to do that. You can if you want to, but for me, I just throw the stem in there and it works great. What's interesting is a few days ago, one of my followers on Instagram DM'd me inquiring about the rosemary coffee, asking me how to do it and if it's really good and stuff. I said, yeah, dude, give it a shot. And uh, he reported back the next day. What he did is he was using a pour over style coffee. I thought this was real interesting is that he took the leaves off of the stem and he put them in the grinder with the beans as he ground the coffee down, he just threw it in the grinder. And then he did his regular uh, pour over style coffee. I thought that was awesome. I haven't personally done that yet. I don't know if I wanna risk getting any rosemary stuck in my coffee grinder or anything like that. But hey, if you're down for that, give it a shot. He said it worked great. Quick fun tip as well, if rosemary is expensive where you are, grow it in your backyard because they grow really easy. A lot of my neighbors have rosemary. Sometimes I'll literally just walk by and clip a piece off if I'm out. Uh, but you can use, uh, if you're doing a, a sprig like this and you're not chopping it up for your coffee brew, you can reuse the rosemary about two or three times and that'll save 
your rosemary. That'll save you some money. So with that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it wasn't too long and I hope it was informative in some way. Please give this coffee recipe a try. Rosemary, black coffee, then you can add whatever you want in there, half and half, mushrooms, anything like that. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down if you really want to, but tell me why you gave it a thumbs down so I can know what to improve on. If you haven't subscribed yet, please go ahead and do so. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you next week.